I'm Winnie Schaefer. I worked in Europe, I worked in Africa, in Asia, now in the Caribbean with our reggae boys. Winfred Schaefer has had a long, much traveled and successful managerial career that began when he was a player in Germany in 1982. My first job as a coach was in München Gladbach, where I coached the amateurs. I was then called back because the first team was in danger of being relegated. So I played another three years of football. During this time, I did my coaching license at the Sport University in Cologne. And then I went to coach second division Karlsruhe, a club I had previously played for. Karl Heinz Ruhl, the manager, called me over and we were promoted to the first division straight away. From Bundesliga 2 to the Bundesliga. I worked for the club for a total of 12 years. It was great to see the club and the players develop. We had many young players that grew up with us, became players in the national team and transferred to Bayern Munich. After Karlsruhe, I dared to go to Stuttgart. We were pretty fierce rivals and not exactly the best of friends. In 2001, Schaefer took a new career path. After that, I went to Cameroon, the Africa Cup of Nations and FIFA World Cup 2002 were coming up, which was of course fantastic. And definitely I do not regret it. It was a great time with the Cameroon boys. They were great players. Song, Eto, and Bomber, Mark Vivian Foe, Lauren, Jeremy, and we won the Africa Cup in Mali. Unfortunately, we weren't so successful at the World Cup. What followed was the Confederations Cup in Paris, France. Sadly, there was a dramatic scene when Marc Vivian Foe died during the game against Colombia. But we were the only African team to be in a FIFA final. So I went to the United Arab Emirates, to Dubai. I won the championship with Al Akli after 26 years. This also led to a revamp of football in the Emirates. All the sheikhs were passionate about football and started investing. And I went to Al Ain, followed by Azerbaijan. I then moved to Thailand to be their national coach, where I had a great time. But we also had difficulties of a political nature. Our results were very, very good. We were unlucky to lose in Australia, and then we drew with Australia in Thailand. Before my arrival, it was common for the team to lose four or five nil, so the development was very encouraging indeed. And then at some point, I ended up in Jamaica. I got on the phone with Captain Burrell, and the captain said, Coach, we need you. Coach, we need you. I then did some research on the team to see what was possible. When you look at the development over the last two years, it's really been fantastic. We played a great Copa America. Jamaica is very excited about football now. The young players, for the kids in the streets, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to ensure that it's not only Usain Bolt, the sprinters, or athletics that dominates. I wanted to change things and convince people to become football crazy. But we also encourage young players from England. This is a signal for the young players in England whose parents are from Jamaica. I'm convinced that in two to three years, we can beat England. After reaching the 2015 CONCACAF Gold Cup final, Jamaica are now aiming to reach the FIFA World Cup finals for only the second time. We are now in 2015. The people need to change their mindset. They are still thinking about 1998. Those days are over. It was an entirely different time. And the development has since stood still in Jamaica. If you look at Costa Rica or Honduras, they were more successful in World Cups than Jamaica. Jamaica always lived in the past. And I told them to ask themselves why they didn't take part in the last four World Cups. He who comes too late is punished by life, Gorbachev once said, and the same thing applies to football.